Hey, welcome to Trail Recon. I'm Brad, and today on this episode, we are in my buddy Mike's garage here at San Diego Off-Road and Custom in Lakeside, California. And the reason we're here is because we're gonna use his lift and we're gonna install these brand new Adams 1350 drive shafts. Now, a few months ago, I posted a picture on Instagram with the boot of my drive shaft had been ripped off because I was out having a little bit too much fun. And both Adams drive shaft and Northridge 4x4 sent me a message and said, Brad, let's find a way to get you some new drive shafts on that Jeep. And so that's what we're doing here today, guys. Thanks, a big shout out to Adams and Northridge 4x4 for sending me these drive shafts. At the end of this video, I will leave a link down below, guys. You can head over to Northridge 4x4 and pick up a set of these. They've got great customer service and great prices. Now, before we talk about the specifics about these and show you the install, I thought it'd be kind of nice just to cover a little basics about what a drive shaft is. So let's hop under the Jeep here real quick. All right, and for some of you that have not been under your Jeep and maybe never checked out your drive shaft, let's just talk a little bit about basics here. So what is a drive shaft? The sole purpose of the drive shaft is to transfer the power from the engine to the wheels. And it, on a Jeep, it does that through the transfer case. And so we have two drive shafts coming off the transfer case. This one here is the rear, and that follows all the way down to the differential where it meets the gears and throws that power to the axle and to the tires. So that's the sole purpose. Now, there is a lot of torque placed on the drive shaft. So these things have to be very strong. Plus, they're spinning very fast, so they need to be balanced perfectly. So while it's just a big stick underneath your Jeep, it's a very important piece and it's gotta be perfect. Here is a close-up look of the new 1350 Adams front and rear CV drive shafts. They both have a greasable Zerk fittings. You know, the craftsmanship on these is really top-notch. They're built with heavy-duty tubing, and they have a slip shaft similar to the stock drive shaft. And these are assembled in phase, so it's very important that if you take these apart for whatever reason, you put them back together exactly on the same splines. And the joints on these drive shaft are super beefy. And on the transfer case side, they are a double carden, which is gonna give us a much better angle over the stock drive shafts. The 1350U joints all have outside snap rings. And Adams supplies new transfer case yoke and differential flanges along with some new heavy duty CV bolts. And I'll do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the stock ones versus the new ones when we get the old ones taken out and so you can really see the difference. Now I know one question I'll get asked is about measurements. And while I did send the measurements into Adams, which was very easy to do, they do offer off-the-shelf drive shafts for several common setups. Now, let's get these new ones installed. Hey Mike, I appreciate you letting me come over here, man, and uh, have this work done in your shop. Now, you're going to be doing all the work today. I'm going to be following you around with a camera. What's the game plan? So we're going to start by removing the rear drive shaft. Uh, then we'll replace the uh, uh, pinion yoke, and then we'll move up here and replace the transfer case yoke, and um, <clears throat> install the rear drive shaft, and we'll move to the front. Nice. How long do you think this uh, project would do if you were doing it in a garage by yourself? Uh, in the garage or in your driveway, it's probably a two-hour project. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, not too bad. All right. All right, Mike, so I have lost both the boots, obviously, on my drive shafts, but this one is pretty common. Tell everybody why this happens. So what happens is when you put a, a lift on and you, <clears throat> you add a longer track bar to compensate for the lift height, when your suspension cycles, it pushes the axle further over than it's designed. Um, so you lose the clearance between the uh, uh, EVAP canister shield and the drive shaft. So it interferes, it rubs, it rips the boot. and Yeah, looks like I've done it shaft. pretty good, huh? Yeah, this was uh, this was a good impact. You know. <laughs> probably don't remember it, but it yeah. was probably pretty loud in the car when it nice. happened. Well, we shouldn't have that problem with the new drive shafts because they're a little narrower, though, they're, right? They're a smaller diameter, so you'll have plenty of clearance now. Uh, one thing you can do is you can actually drop this down and move the bolt holes over about an inch here on the front and then the one in the back. So you can actually move this whole EVAP canister over about an inch, and even with the stock drive shaft, that'll give you clearance. Okay, nice. Good tip. All right, Mike, what are we starting off with? We're going to start by breaking loose all of the drive shaft bolts. And then once they're break, broken loose, you can either use a gun uh, or a drill to run them out.
right, Mike, what we got? So trying to remove the drive shaft uh, from the yoke is pretty difficult. Uh, it just gets, you know, from weather and, and, and gets corroded in there, and it wants to uh, not let this come loose. So you have to use a little love with a hammer to try to break it loose. A little love, a little motivation? Yeah. So Mike was telling me all these marks under here on my uh, fuel pan skid are all from the mall. All right, guys, we've got uh, both rear drive shafts laid out side by side, and you can see the diameter. I mean, while this is actually stronger, it's got a thicker walled metal than the stock one, it's much narrower, which is gonna give us a lot more clearance. And then the joints here, you can just tell that the difference, look how beefy this double carbon is compared to the stock joint. All right, Mike, what's next, buddy? So now we're gonna remove the um, uh, rear pinion flange and uh, replace it with the replacement unit and then I'll show you how to carefully install the new one so you don't change the preload on your uh, pinion bearing. Okay. So once the nut is off, if you give this a little tap with a hammer very gently and it comes off, great. If not, you're going to have to use a puller. You don't want to go beating this uh, too hard with the hammer because there's bearings in here that could be damaged. All right, so guys, this is the only specialty tool that Mike's really going to be using today, and this is a posi lock puller, and this is actually going to give a lot of tension on there, right, Mike, to make it easy to pull it out of there? Exactly. And you don't have to go buy one of these. You can go rent these at your local auto parts store, and they usually load them to you for free. Is that right? Yes. So when, once you remove the pinion flange, you just want to give the seal a good look over and make sure you don't have any leaks or any rips or tears. Okay, how's mine look? Excellent. So we want to apply a little new grease on the outside of the flange so that when we install it into the housing, it doesn't start dry on the seal. Okay, you want to start it on as far as you can by hand and then we're gonna put the washer and the nut on and run it up. So we wanna put a little silicone on the back of the uh, pinion flange washer uh, to help seal up the housing. And the RTV, the RTV will go towards the housing. We're gonna use red Loctite on the pinion nut to make sure that it doesn't back off. You do not want this coming loose. It'll create a, a major vibration. Okay, we're going to tighten the pinion nut now. And what you want to do is as you're tightening the pinion nut, you want to stop periodically and make sure that you're taking the play out. Once all the play up and down, side to side is out, uh, you know that you've bottomed out. So you can tighten it up a little bit more from there to get the torque on the nut, uh, but you don't want to over tighten it because then you start to crush the uh, crush sleeve and that will change the preload on the pinion bearing. So you, you can, you heard it just bottom out right there. A Couple more hits, good to go. Again, we want to grease 
the seal area. Just put a little RTV on the uh, outside of the nut. Yeah, you, this one you can use a little bit more. You want to make a nice thick bead on here. And then again with the Loctite. Now I'm going to tighten up the output flange. I'm going to first run it up nice and tight with the impact gun, and I'm going to come back and torque it to 160 foot-pounds. So we ran the output flange nut up with the impact. Now we're going to torque it to make sure that we're at a minimum of 160 foot-pounds. 160. 160. That's a lot. Yeah. So I think it's really important to mention that if you're doing this in your garage, you need to make sure you've got this pretty sturdy on some good stands because yeah, you, you put 160 foot-pounds on there. Not only that, it's going to take a lot to get 160 foot-pounds on it laying on your back in the driveway. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you have it on your, your jack stands nice and high, yeah. nice and safe right. uh, to be able to get under there and, and crank on it. Yeah. One thing I like to do is before I put the drive shaft up is I'm going to put a little bit of red Loctite on all the bolts so I don't have to stop in the middle of trying to balance the drive shaft in place to put my Loctite on. And it doesn't take a lot, a little goes a long way. So now we're ready to uh, bolt up the back of the drive shaft. So we want to remove the, the packaging tape that holds the U-joint together. And you want to be real careful, try not to pull the cups off as you do this. Bunch of needle bearings in there, correct? Yes, sir. And they go everywhere. Then on the uh, yoke, you'll see these little, little tabs. You definitely want to make sure that when you put the drive shaft in, the cups are sitting inside these tabs. We're going to put the U-joint saddle on. We're going to use these lock washers. You do not need to use Loctite here. You want to start them up. And the most important thing to remember here is you want to bring these up even. So when it's all done, everything's nice and tight, you want about the same amount of thread sticking out of the nut on the top and the bottom. All right, Mike, how tight are we going with these guys? So with these, all you want is snug and then a quarter turn. Easy. So now, Mike, that's, uh, that looseness there is backlash, and that's normal, right? Right. There's backlash set in your differential gears, and there's backlash set up in the transfer case at those gears. So this, this play is normal. And what that's is normal. that? Uh, well, when everything gets hot, it expands, and you don't want the gears to bind, so they have a little bit of backlash built in. Okay, so if it was at zero, like there was no backlash, yeah, as, as it got hot, it would just start to just grind into, the gears will grind into themselves and just start to wear away. Okay. Cool, good, good intel. Now we're gonna move our attention to the front drive shafts. And here is a shot of the front drive shaft at full droop. And you can see that I am already maxing out the angle of this stock one. The process for removing and installing the front drive shaft is similar to the rear. You just have a little bit more challenge getting access to the transfer case side because you've got the skid plate and the exhaust in the way, but Mike made quick work of this, no problems. So just one thing to mention here guys is uh, there's a little clearance issue with the transfer case cable mounting bracket here. This is actually hitting the drive shaft and so they even mentioned that you might have to clearance this. So we're just going to take a little bit off of this and then I'll make it so there's plenty of clearance for the drive shaft. So right now what I'm doing is I'm holding the drive shaft uh, from being able to turn so I can tighten up the uh, output shaft bolts uh, for the drive shaft. Uh, but another way to do it is you can let the Jeep up or down, put it in park, put it in four wheel, 
and then it'll keep it from being able to turn. But this is easier since you're on the lift. Last thing after everything's installed is throw grease. There's a couple shots of grease in there. Good to go. All right, Mike, so once again, brother, you were turning wrenches for me, helping me out while I was just standing back watching behind the camera. Look, I, I really appreciate all the hard work you did today. Yep, no problem. So, look, we're finished. Uh, now, what are some things folks need to think about as they're getting towards the end of this install? Uh, definitely want to uh, grease the shafts. They come pre-greased, uh, but from taking them in and out of the box and moving them in and out during install, some of that grease comes out, so you want to put a few shots of grease in there. Okay. Uh, you definitely want to make sure everything's torqued. And then after about 100 miles of driving, get under there and retorque everything again. Okay. You don't have to obviously retorque the uh, differentials. Um, you don't have to drop the shafts and all that, but you just anything you can get to, you want to retorque. Okay. And first test drive out of the box, what should we be looking for? Uh, vibration, more than anything. Weird noises, clunks, bangs. Uh, if something's wrong, you're going to know it in a hurry. Okay. Yeah, that thing's spinning fast. So okay. if it's if not right, you all know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned greasing it. How often should we grease these guys? Uh, every three to 5,000 miles. Uh, a good rule of thumb is just with every oil change, unless you're using an oil where you have a really extended period of time between changes. Yeah, nice. Well, they look great. Uh, not that I will ever be looking at them very often, but the peace of mind of knowing that I have those 1350s under there is going to be really nice. You know, that's going to be a long time of strength and durability with those. Um, now, Mike, uh, we're in your shop today, and I'm so thankful for coming here and being able to use your lift. Tell folks a little bit about your shop. Well, we're San Diego Off-Road and Custom. Uh, we're a full-service off-road shop. Uh, we do specialize in Jeep, but we service all makes and models. I'm happy to assist anybody with any kind of build that they want to do. Awesome. Well, guys, if you are in Southern California, and I get this question all the time, come down to San Diego Off-Road and Custom. Mike will do a good job for you, hook you right up. And look, if you are interested in picking up a set of these drive shafts, I will leave a link in the description. Go check them out. Appreciate Northridge 4x4 and Adam's drive shaft help for this. Look, if you're visiting the channel for the first time, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.